Speaker, I move that so much of the standing and sessional orders be suspended, as would prevent the Manager of Opposition Business from moving the following motion forthwith. That the House 1 notes that today this House unanimously asked the High Court to determine whether the Deputy Prime Minister is constitutionally qualified to be a Member of Parliament. B. The New Zealand Government has since confirmed that the Deputy Prime Minister is a New Zealand citizen, despite the Prime Minister's assurances on this matter. C. The Government has relied on the vote of the Deputy Prime Minister to block a Royal Commission into the banks and to block amendments to legislation which would have prevented nearly 700,000 Australians from having their penalty rates cut. And D. The former Minister for Resources in Northern Australia resigned from Cabinet because there were doubts over his constitutional qualifications. And two, therefore, calls on the Prime Minister to a release any legal advice it has received about the constitutional qualifications of the Deputy Prime Minister, b rule out accepting the vote of the Deputy Prime Minister while his constitutional qualifications are in doubt, and c direct the Deputy Prime Minister to immediately resign from Cabinet. This is a government without legitimacy. This is a government that has had to, for the first time in the history of this country, go to the High Court and ask whether or not it in fact has a majority. We've never had a government before, ever since Federation, that has had to go to the High Court because they just weren't sure if they had a majority or not. We just had an alleged lecture from the Leader of the House talking about lawlessness. Talk about lawlessness! We've got someone in the role of Deputy Prime Minister, and we're not even sure if he's meant to be a Member of Parliament. We're not even sure if he's been legally, lawfully elected. And what's the test meant to be? Whether or not he's also a citizen of New Zealand. And what does the Government of New Zealand say? Yes, he is. You've got the most senior people in New Zealand saying they know the answer to this. See, don't forget, with Senator Canavan, we were told before, and Senator Canavan is the one who was made to stand aside. Now, when he had to stand aside, he said, but I intend to check whether or not this has happened lawfully under Italian law, because he believed there was doubt under Italian law as to whether he was in fact a citizen. Well, we've now got the Prime Minister of New Zealand saying, no, 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 there's no question, unwittingly or not, he might not have meant to do it, but he is a citizen of New Zealand. You know, this could have been handled completely differently today. There was an opportunity for the government today to be able to have the Deputy Prime Minister stand aside. There's an opportunity for the government to be able to pri prioritise in terms of divisions while this matter is being resolved issues where they're not relying on a majority of one. But no, that's not how they operate. That's not how a Prime Minister who will say anything and do anything to be in office operates. Because what they're willing to do now is say, who cares what the Constitution says? Who cares about the risk that we might be having ministerial decisions made by somebody that aren't in fact lawful, that aren't in fact allowed under the Constitution? We just reckon we'll get away with it. And the extraordinary thing earlier today, right at the beginning of question time, to have the Prime Minister tell the High Court what it would decide. What extraordinary words! Not, not we are confident, not we are confident, but to have the situation where the Prime Minister is telling, through his office of, part of Prime Minister, telling the High Court what its conclusion will be. Now, the Labor Party, I can say, we are confident every member of the Labor caucus has been properly elected. We have processes which we have had in place that go back to grandparents, making Member sure that wherever citizenship needs to be renounced, that the full requirements of the Constitution are taken into place. But this is the Prime Minister. Remember his description of the Greens. Remember what he was saying when the Greens first declared that they, the Green Party, that they had made mistakes of this nature. And he was talking about extraordinary recklessness on their part, about how hopeless they were. Well, Prime Minister, every criticism you made about the Greens is now about you. Every single word you said about that party, it's now about the Prime Minister himself. Senator Canavan, imagine how that poor bloke feels right now. <laughs> 
If only the coalition agreement had been signed with him, he'd still be in the job. If only he'd been in the House of Representatives as a critical vote, he'd still be in the job. Because if you think about what's the difference between Senator Canavan's situation and the Deputy Prime Minister's situation, Senator Canavan says he had no way of knowing that this could have happened. It was done by others around him he couldn't have known. According to what the Deputy Prime Minister said today, every single fact is based on something he's known all his life. All the facts that have led the New Zealand government to make this decision aren't based on an additional application. They're based on facts the Deputy Prime Minister has known all his life. And yet the protection racket kicks in. And yet we end up having a government that will mock other parties, have a reference for their own people in the Senate, which isn't quite the threshold that everyone else gets held to. But then when it comes to the vote that this man needs to continue to be Prime Minister of Australia, at that moment, every principle is out the window. At the moment that it's, if only, there's Australians all around the country in a series of industries, in the automotive industry, at shopping, in shopping complexes, at restaurants, and they're all saying, if only he fought for their jobs as tough as he's now fighting for his own. If only he would care and put as much, con as much commitment into fighting for the jobs of Australians as he's putting in today for his own job. We have a situation where the Prime Minister—this is what he said with respect to the Green Party. He said, those two senators knew exactly what the rules are. <laughs> Apparently the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia hadn't heard about this, this constitution document. And then he went on to say, why they wouldn't have turned their mind to it and dealt with it is beyond me. Well, Prime Minister, a few things. First of all, if the Prime Minister really believes those words, then how on earth can he think this is the human being who should be his second in charge? If he actually believes any of the words he spoke when he thought the only people at stake were members of the Green Party, how on earth? Can he now be in a situation where he's willing to accept somebody who has acted with that same degree of recklessness and make that person deputy prime minister? And there's only one reason why he'll do it. There's only one reason why this prime minister will make all these concessions because it's contingent on him keeping his job. That's what it's about. Think of all the times this house has divided and the government has held on by a majority of one. Think of the times when every member of the crossbench has lined up on the same side as the Labor, Labor opposition and the outcome for Australia could have been different. And yet, it's not even that they're not only you're unwilling to say, well, we won't accept his vote, they're not even willing to say, while well, this is being resolved, he won't get his salary. Every dollar of the salary has to survive during this period where the parliament has voted unanimously that we don't know whether he's allowed to be here. Yet yeah, this isn't like Labor did some deal and someone crossed the floor and we just got it over the line. The Leader of the House came in here today and moved it. It was carried unanimously in this House. This House has resolved for the first time in its history that we don't know whether or not this government has a majority. And the Prime Minister reckons it's business as usual. Well, let me tell you, Prime Minister, it's not business as usual for the victims of the banks who've been held back by the way you've hung on to that majority of one. It's not business as usual for the Australians who've taken a pay cut as their penalty cut rates were taken from them when this parliament tried to fix it. What this government is doing is accepting that it doesn't know whether or not it's acting lawfully but keeping itself, keeping its job anyway. They need to release the advice as to why the situation for Senator Canavan is different to the situation for the member for New England. Yeah. Senator Canavan may or may not be a senator. The member for New England may or not, may not really be the member for New England. But the other thing we don't know, this government may or may not have a majority. And yet it thinks it can govern anyway and the Australian people won't notice. The Australian people aren't going to miss today. The Australian people aren't going to let today be something that just slips their mind, didn't flick the news on. Today was the day that the parliament resolved it didn't know whether or not this government had a majority 
and the Prime Minister was determined to cling to power whether it was legal or not. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the motion.